Welcome to Calming the Chaos Podcast, where we help you find peace in a chaotic world. I'm Tracy Canella, licensed mental health counselor, certified eating disorder specialist, and advanced clinical hypnotherapist. Calming the Chaos Podcast provides you with self-help resources for handling anxiety, stress, and overwhelm. It is not a substitute for counseling or psychotherapy. So if you like what you hear, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks for tuning in. And now, let the chaos begin. And yes, let the chaos begin. This is an interview I did with Charles Smith back in December of 2022. Right now it's April 29th, 2023, and I was just editing it and I thought, wow, I need to give a trigger warning out. There are some themes that are discussed in this video um, podcast about things that may be sensitive to some people, such as death, dying, death of parents, domestic violence, and also weapons and defending yourself. But I promise you, although it kind of starts out a little slow, we really ramp up in talking about how you can find hope in a chaotic world. So please hang in there with us, all right? It's a little slow getting started, but it really does have a good message. So I hope you listen all the way through. Thank you again for listening to Calming the Chaos, and let's listen in to our interview with Charles Smith. In this episode of Calming the Chaos, I am here with Charles Smith, who is an author, and he actually authors books about lifelong experiences, his own, in fact. And he has been through a lot of chaos in his life. And so I'm so happy to have him here talking with me today on Coming the Chaos podcast. So he talks about trauma and grief and PTSD, things like homelessness, addiction recovery, and something that's really super interesting to me, which is survival skills for safety in the real world. And so for those of you who may want help in any of these areas, but are a little bit hesitant about contacting a counselor, these books might be for you. But let's just get to know uh, Charles Smith as he comes up to visit us with Calming the Chaos. Welcome, Charles Smith. Hi, Tracy. Thank you so much for having me on. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to talk to you. And gosh, you know, uh, you have had a lot of experiences that you have survived, struggled through, and managed. So just uh, let us uh, know a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, what you're doing, and maybe how you've been uh, able to get going in the direction that you're going with these books. Well, I'm a... Uh... I'm a survivor of lifelong PTSD. Um, started when I was six years old with my, my mother passing away and of drugs and alcohol. And then my father passing away five years after that and me becoming uh, an orphan, me and my sister. And oh. luckily, we didn't fall into the system. We had family that took us in. I have a book out there called 10 Homes in 11 Years. And um, that's all about the time that I was, well, up until 11 years old. And that's when my father passed away. Oh, wow. Uh, that's what the 10 Homes in 11 Years. We'll get to your books in a little bit. We've got some... Uh, some pictures to show and your website to visit. But yeah, that's one of your books, 10 Homes in 11 Years. Is that the one about grief and loss or is that another one? That's one of my first memoirs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So uh, a very rough initiation into this world for sure. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Yeah. So when you say lifelong PTSD, that means that there are some things that even now can trigger some emotions or some really powerful emotions or flashbacks for you and you're able to handle? Oh yeah, I, I have 
I have what's called compounded or complex mm -hmm. PTSD. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what that is, I think of that as like a layer of cake. And um, how I describe it to people is you have like, you know, it's trauma is piled on top of each other. So my, my compounded PTSD deals with death. It deals with uh, an explosion that I survived. It deals with um, a few dog attacks that I've been exposed to. It deals with riots that I was in, in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, being in the military. There's a lot of different triggers that I have. A layer cake. I really appreciate that example of PTSD and how trauma can be layered like that for sure. Wow, where do we want to go from from here? I mean, we we open it up with this big trauma. It's almost like a big explosion. Uh, where do it we is. want to go? <laughs> well, the dog attack I hadn't heard about, or the multiple dog attacks. I've heard about the multiple homes and the death of your parents. Hmm. And I'm not really sure I heard about the military, but what would you like to talk about? I'll tell you about the, the one dog attack. Um, I was in the Cape on a military base and I was attached to the headquarters company. Some, uh, civilians brought a what I can describe as a hound from hell. It mm. was it was like a Doberman combined with a Rottweiler combined with a German Shepherd. It was just a incredibly scary looking dog. That dog got away from the um, the civilians and attacked a number of different soldiers and it was coming towards me through some woods i heard some yelling and then i heard um some barking as i was going towards the woods to go to the latrine the bathroom i had to go through the woods to go there and so i stopped i'm like what what is that and then this dog comes out I had an empty M16 on me, and I turned the, the gun, the weapon around, and I I matched the dog's movements with the M16, so the dog couldn't bite me. But you didn't have it loaded, it sounded no, like. No, it, I didn't even have a magazine in there, no. Wow. Yeah, but I matched the dog's movements with the M16 until and my my headquarters company could see me what was going on and everybody came running down but it was able to deter the dog from harming you yeah 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 hmm. but wow it, an it unloaded M16 through. who would have thought <laughs> yeah i i just did what came natural at that time you know i'm like this is all i have on me i'm going to He's not going to get at me. <laughs> well, and I hope to talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the survival skills for safety at home, school, and on the street. Um, and uh, maybe that's where you learned it first, right? Because you had an awfully long period of time uh, of initiation into chaos and then being able to survive with the loss of uh, your, your mother and then not in the system, but with family and then the loss of, of your dad by 11 years old. Uh, right. Just, yeah. Well, uh, so you did not get bitten. I didn't. A number of other soldiers did, but I, I didn't get bitten at that time, no. Can you tell us a little bit about where your mind was at and how you were able to keep it together as far as not freaking out that a dog's coming towards you and how you were able to be calm and stay stable on your feet and deal with that situation? I was freaking out. <laughs> okay. I won't tell you I wasn't freaking out, but I, um, with 
breathing breathing techniques and you know mindfulness techniques that I've done over the years, I've developed the ability to um, freak out but stay calm at the same time. Mm. You know, stay yeah. calm within the chaos, and um, you know, just as I'm freaking out and. I'm also focusing on, okay, making sure that that dog is going to not get at me, you know, because that thing was vicious. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And the way you described it, it was a really super intense breed of dog. If it was, you know, a bunch of different breeds that were really super aggressive. Yeah. It, it looked like a, the height of a Doberman, but then, like the width of like a um, a Rottweiler, mm. like it was just, just big. Oh my god! Really? Like yeah. it could be Cujo. It could be like a Stephen King uh, novel sort I of. I could have probably made a book out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stephen King likes writing about dogs for sure. Yeah. yeah wow. Mm. But uh, so you survived that dog attack and that was when you were in the military. I, I just got to ask you. So with a history of a complex PTSD already by the age of 11, what made you want to join the military that would just expose you to more, more of this, you know, trauma? I didn't realize that I had PTSD um, until I was in my 30s and I joined the military when I was in my 20s. I went undiagnosed all that time. And um, it wasn't until I, my, my grandfather and my uncle died a month apart that I went into my deepest, darkest depression. And that was in my, th in 2001 after the military. And I, I was in such a depression that I was cutting on myself and, um, I attempted suicide mm. and I, uh, I just became homeless at that time. And that's when I found out through getting into the VA system that I had PTSD mm. and they told me that I had it all those years. So that right. was, that was a good thing in the end, you know, because it, it taught me that I, I had, um, you know, what I had, cause I, I, I knew for all that time that I was different, you know, something right. was off, mm -hmm. but I didn't know quite what it was. Yeah. It's always nice to know what you're dealing with and then yeah. you can find a way to handle it. So when you found out that you had PTSD, you weren't, you were in your thirties. So all of this time. <laughs> and then, so like you said, the layers just continued to pile on the layers of trauma, like that layer cake you described earlier. Yeah. And then in the, in your thirties, yeah. you realized that that was going on. Was that what motivated you to start to write about it? Or what did you do when you found out what it was you you were dealing with? Well, when I found out what I was dealing with, I was also still homeless and um, staying in homeless shelters and veterans shelters. And that really opened my eyes because I... For a lot of my life, I was like, you know, thinking the world owed me for the loss of my parents. You know, I, I was yeah. cocky. I was, my uncle used to call me Prince because I had to like royalty in Charles, yeah. Prince mm -hmm. Charles. Prince Charles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, you know, and I, I, uh, I deserved that probably, but I, I, um, just it opened my eyes when I, I seen veterans that were suffering alongside me. You know, and then mm -hmm. I decided that I wanted to help my fellow veterans. You know, mm -hmm. and that's when I started writing I started developing um well I had a nonprofit first and that was um 
a nonprofit called Karma, which isn't in existence anymore. But that was a PI agency. It was developed as a PI agency, private investigation agency. And that was going to um, help out veterans and their families, people that are coming back from overseas because there was a lot of domestic violence happening mm -hmm. with veterans, people coming back from overseas because of the PTFC. So what, what I would do, me and my team, was we would come in and um, get the family to safety out, out of the harm, out of harm's way, protect them. At the same time, helping the, the veteran deal with their PTSD. Wow. You know, but I, I couldn't do that because of funding. Funding was very um, skittish because of the danger aspect. So I had a hard time getting it done. So mm -hmm. then that, that turned into developing programs like my first three books, my trauma book, my uh, self-situational uh, awareness book, and my positive thinking book were actually programs at first that I started running for different organizations, veterans organizations, and places around my area. Mm. And that's where they're at now. They're now they're books because I don't do that anymore. Well, and did you name your nonprofit organization Karma because it was going to be Karma was going to get you, or you know, because it's more like a PI sort of thing. Like we're gonna we're gonna sniff you guys out and find you, and you're gonna get the karma that you deserve. That's one of the ways that my mind went. Or there's another reason why you named it Karma. I'm just curious about that. It was because karma is one of the, nobody escapes karma. You know, karma is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. You know, in good, good or bad, nobody es escapes karma and you always get what is coming to you. Mm. you know, even if it's a protection that you need. Karma, right. you always get what's coming to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think it's a great name for a nonprofit organization. And I'm sad to hear that it's not in existence today. But apparently the fact that it is not in existence today led you to write some of these books to help your fellow veterans. And I think they've been helping other people too, because the topics in these books are so varied and they do touch on a lot of topics of chaos that I would really like to uh, pick your brain about a little bit. We've talked about trauma and PTSD uh, and uh, grief and loss, and those are yeah. definitely this, the topics of two of your books. Uh, but you talk about homelessness as well, and that in the time after you were in the military, you were homeless. And then also, by virtue of being orphaned or actually separated from your mother, you were homeless for a time. And when you were being placed, not in the system, but with your family members. So you've definitely, without a whole 11, what was it? 11 homes in 10 years or 10 years, 10 homes, in 11, homes in 11 years, 10, 10 homes in 11 years. years. Yeah. That's sort of akin to being homeless in a way, because you don't have a chance to sprout any roots. Right. Yeah, oh. yeah, we were all all over the all over the map too, from Massachusetts to Arizona to Texas to yeah, all over the place. And you talk also in one of your books about addiction and recovery mm -hmm. and positive thinking and finding success. So they're not all doom and gloom. They're all they're about trying to help people through these life experiences that we're in, right? Right. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so when we talk about chaos and about doing the things that we need to do to survive in this world, I'm really super curious about the book that you have 
uh, about survival skills, because we do talk a lot about that on Calling the Chaos, about how do you survive a chaotic world and find peace or at least be able to exist? Uh, how did you come up with the idea about doing that sort of book? I was in a um, small business association group years back and somebody had a scare in a um in a garage that was ill lit you know like dark in garage and um it was right off of like their work like they had their building and then a the little f you know they had a walkway and then they had the garage where everybody parked and somebody came at the woman with a knife as she was trying to get into a car. And I'm like, well, they, <clears throat> and I easy, you know, fix to that is a security guard and lighting, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, right off the bat, those are two things that you do right away environmental ways to cope or be preventative in that yeah, happening again, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we do that um, we're not aware of the consequences. Mm. Like 78% of people walk around in what's called a white stage of mind. And that's unalert, unaware and unprepared. And mm -hmm. their their heads, you know, in a phone. And you know, there, there's there's a picture that I love. There's um a group of people and they're watching like you don't see what they're watching, but it looks like they're watching a parade or something. Everybody's taking pictures of the parade. But then there's one older lady just sitting there and watch it, watching the parade, you know, and she's getting the pictures from her memory, mm -hmm. you know, instead of, you know, and it's like, you know, just making you think of, you know, don't put your head in a, in a phone. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm, I'm always telling my kid, he's always got his electronics and when I'm driving, and I'm like, oh, look at that. Oh, you missed that. <laughs> like, oh, what? my God. <laughs> How old is your kid? You have a son, right? Yeah, he's 10. Yeah. He's 10. Yeah. yeah. So so that teaches him that he, he doesn't want to miss it next time. And so maybe he'll put the device down next time you have yeah. a car ride. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. yeah, we talk a lot about mindfulness on this channel. Mindfulness being just the intentional paying attention to what's going on in the here and now, in the present moment, what you're actually experiencing versus how the monkey mind sort of drifts away mm. and goes to other things like let's be in a car ride with our dad and be on our phone is not being very mindful, but to right. put the phone down and have a conversation with dad or to notice the scenery would be more mindful than that. Yeah. 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 Oh. Like um, one thing I bring up a lot is how people go to work every day or come home from work every day. You know, like yeah. a lot of people, when, when I worked as a PI, if I wanted to follow you to work, I wouldn't even have to sit outside your house. Hmm. I would what would you sit, do? I would sit down the road or I would sit at your favorite coffee shop and wait for you because hmm. I know that that's where you're going to go because people are like drones, especially in the morning before coffee. <laughs> they go one way and they go the other way and they go one way and the other way. Right. And so in, in that book, I, I tell them, you know, how many different ways can you think of that you can go to and from work? Because mm -hmm. I was a PI doing it, but what right. if it's someone wanted to stalk you? Exactly. And they're doing it. 
I know. And I'm thinking about these, I don't know if you've heard about the uh, of Boise State, Idaho, you know, stabbings, killings of the four uh, students there, and how they seem to be pretty, in general, pretty vigilant, but this does seem to be a, a targeted attack. And so uh, being able to vary your, and I've heard this before, vary your routes. Like, don't just go the, the same way every day. Don't just have your your head in your phone and keep your environment well lit. Keep yeah, your phone yeah. by you, a uh, method of defense by you. I know, I know you haven't talked about that yet, but I have, I have pepper spray, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you, and you, a plan. Keys. Like, I don't mm -hmm. have my keys about me, but pretend this is... It's a Southwick Zubat. <laughs> <laughs> so pretend this is a key or keys. Pre pre pretend it's it's a set of keys. A lot of people hold okay. the keys, say to hold the keys like this, you know, with, with the two um, prongs poking out. That's the best way to break your fingers. Oh. So what you want to do is like this is uh, the top of the key. You want to hold it like a knife. And, this is my you know, knife. Yeah, like jab with with your biggest key, mm. and always jab out. You know, and yeah, I I yeah. Uh, I get that. It, like what I was doing when you were saying that, I was like, what do I have in my environment? And there's this, and then there's the stapler that I could possibly use, but I don't know how to work it. Um, I guess I could just do that. Ah. No, that's not good. I would be terrible. This is why I need to practice the oh, defense. Any, anything that lamp behind you, that, that one? guitar behind you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people. A lot of people that call those an X. <laughs> well, yeah, and I have this little fish, you know, that I got in Mexico. You know, fishy, fishy. I could just throw it at them, and it has a nail inside of it. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, just use what's in your environment, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Use what's in your environment. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, so how are you going to keep your mind quiet as you are doing this sort of thing? Say you are actually under attack. Say you are actually under attack or you're one of those Idaho students, bless them and their families, of course. But what do you do when somebody is coming at you or when you have this dog, like you said, the dog attack? And uh, yeah, how do you keep your mind quiet when you're freaking out? Try to focus on your on your breathing, mm -hmm. but obviously focus on everything else too. But you know, focus on slow down your breathing. Slow down your breathing so you're not freaking out. And mm -hmm. um, if you feel yourself getting an anxious, try to you know focus on it more. Mm -hmm. Focus on your breathing more. And one one thing I tell people is. Um, practice. You know, like I carry a. I don't. I don't like to carry a gun on me because I've had my fill of guns in my life. I carry a baton on me. A baton? Oh, like a police yeah, baton? A, a, an expendable, expendable baton. Mm. It, it expands to about the length of my forearm. You can't see oh. it because of the screen, but it there expands to about that long. But um. Hmm. I train with that thing, so it's an extension of me. You know, and I I have well over like a hundred hours training with it. Wow, yeah. like a ninja! You're like a ninja. <laughs> but that's you know that that's that's how many hours you, we need. And like they say, you need ninety hours for one technique to use that one technique in a dangerous situation. Wow. Yeah. That is so interesting. I know the police in England have batons. I don't know that we have them. We probably have them in the U.S. as well. And uh, yet, wow, that is amazing amount of training that you have dedicated yourself to. Well done. <laughs> thank you, thank you. 
I remember I had a baton, but I used to twirl it, you know, like sort of like, you know, a dancing baton. But now I'm kind of thinking that thing could be a pretty good sort of a mechanism to, um, oh, yeah. to at least deter a dog, right? If a, if a dog came charging at me, I guess I could do what you did and just sort of uh, mark the, the motions and make it do whatever, distract it, whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, wow. But I, I, I always say to um, train with whatever you are going to carry on you, even if it's pepper spray. Because someone like me could take that weapon away from you and use it on you. Right. If you're not trained with it. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got to make sure that you, you know that weapon inside and out. So let me ask you this. How did you become so strong that you were able to overcome a lot of obstacles in your life? Was it just your determination or did you have a will to live? Uh, walk us through why and how you have become so strong over the years and have been able to do all of these things despite so many obstacles in your life. That's a good question. I, and I, I, I'm asked that a lot. Um, probably just being, being stubborn. You know, I, You're I, just a I, stubborn I, guy, huh? Yeah. I mean, I I was just having a conversation with this with a client um, a couple hours ago. When I was 11 years old, my family was like, what are we going to do with, with him? You know, because of everything that I went through in my first 11 years of my life. Like, thinking that I was washed up. Mm -hmm. You know, and I defied the odds. How I did it is anyone's guess, really. I'm just persistent. I don't give up, especially now with my son in my life. I really don't give up. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, it's not just me anymore. It's him too. Mm -hmm. You know, so... I, I guess I'm I'm just I think I'm here for a reason. So you have the will to live, you have a purpose, you have your son, and so and you're just in your own character, just a stubborn guy. And yeah. that all makes <laughs> for this mixture of being able to overcome overcome chaos. Have you ever felt like there's been something that uh, has been your kryptonite or has weakened you that you really, it was really hard for you to be able to combat and it was really just a big challenge because you seem like a strong guy, but maybe there's a kryptonite area there somewhere. A lot of people have said that my heart is my greatest strength, but also my greatest weakness. Mm hmm. No, I could see that. I could see yeah. that that could be uh, one thing that would be really weakening and strengthening at the same time. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So how does one get through this life with such a big heart for helping people and for surviving and being motivated, but yet being in a sense, a bit fragile of heart to have it broken quite easily. How do we get through that? That is an interesting sort of a question. And if you can't answer it, just let me know. And uh, you can email me back and we can put it in the notes. But I just thought I'd just <laughs> throw it on out there. That's a good question, too. Yeah, um, yeah the fragile heart and the strong yeah. heart, right? Yeah, I mean, I've my heart's gotten me in trouble before. Mm. It's like wow. I've 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 done things that I probably shouldn't have to help others. Hmm. You know, gotten myself in trouble to help others and stuff like that. And you know, I I bent the rules in my past to help others. You know, just so I don't know. I mean, you know, I just. I do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, somehow you've got to have some resilience, right? So you know, like to be able to have some resilience and then some compassion as well and to be able to balance that. I think that's, I think that's a unique balance for all of us. For each one of us, we have a different level of, of doing that. So I appreciate yeah. that. Most of well, well, one of the things you write about too, and we're going to visit your books and your website in just a minute, is addiction recovery. And I wonder if that's something you've personally experienced. And you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. We can just go ahead and you know move move along. Uh, yeah. But I know you said your your mother had struggled with that, and maybe you had learned about it. What do you know about addictions recovery? Because I'm so interested in in hearing what you have to say about that. Well, I'm in 30 years recovery myself from um, crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. And I, I work for a phenomenal um, program called Aware Recovery Care, which is okay. in multiple states. Um, Massachusetts, Connecticut, all around here, Florida, I think Texas, not California yet, but we're going to be going to Kentucky is another one that we just got in, but we're an IHAP program, which is in-home addiction treatment. Like if you were suffering from uh, addiction and getting into recovery, we would come to your home and mm -hmm. we would, um, you know, uh, work with you for a year, 52 weeks, which is what I love because I've, I've worked in, um, detoxes and CSS programs and whatnot. And I always felt like I didn't have enough time with the clients. And now I feel like I, I have, you know, so much time and we, we have such a phenomenal record because of the time that we have with our clients. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, that's a luxury, to, though, when you think about time and being able to spend one-on-one uh, -on -one or even group time with people. That's so That's so great. Uh, so yeah. I would like to be able to get the name of that organization and put it in the notes so that people will have that resource. And yeah. I don't know that I've gotten that from you. Aware but that is so cool. Com. It's what? AwareRecoveryCare.com. Awesome. Yeah, All right. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, great. Yeah. And so now what I'd like to be able to do is go and put up your website. And um, it's it's really super cool. I'm going to go ahead and this is lifelongexperience.net. That is a Charles Smith's website. And I'm going to go ahead and attempt to show the screen with you, <laughs> share the screen with you. <laughs> Not the scream, but the screen. And I think it is this one. I think this is it right here. Yeah. You know, this is an interesting, wow. Okay. So this is the home page. If you can see it, can you see it okay? Yep. I just did a lot of work on it too. Well, and the water, I mean, it's mesmerizing. It, it sort of like makes me a little dizzy, but it's, it's a dizzy in a good way, right? And the very know. first, <laughs> what's that? I'm not I said, getting I seasick. Okay. I promise you I'm not getting seasick. Um, so right. we've got this and we've got all of your books and this immediate link to your YouTube channel. And we will look at the books separately. Uh, but this is a really cool front page. Don't just cover up your wounds. Heal, with, heal from within. And then um, uh, just this really super cool uh, explanation about who you are and what you do and and that's on the front page and uh, so yeah I'm just a really super cool website and um, I know that was just the first page and we'll go ahead and share another page here uh, we've got uh, another screen that actually has the merchandise that you have I didn't know you had merchandise and uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there, I everything from a stainless steel water bottle, affirmations, yeah, yeah. all that stuff. Wow, um, yeah, karma is that karma? There we yeah. go. 
there's that there's a sweatshirt there's two kinds of sweatshirts here there's all yeah. kinds of merchandise you can buy anything you want to say about any of your merch i am completely impressed uh you've got all this merchandise thank you and i plan on making more <laughs> yeah you, you might want to uh you know do you formulate your your own uh, personal baton or something like that i, mean, I love you, those you know, uh, so. i actually have one of those cups right here this one um, the comfort yep, zone uh, one. No. Nope, oh, the, uh, oh I see. Enlightened insulated coffee cup. Ah, yep. yes. That's yes. The, that's gonna be the new cover for the self protection book. Because I'm I'm and, I'm redeveloping the covers because I, I found a really great artist, phenomenal artist. Nice. That is helping me. Um, do all my covers over again. So. In case of emergency, break glass, it says, right? Yeah, yep, yep. And then this comfort zone, actually, that looks like the background that you're using in that your- the uh, same background. It's, a, it's the <laughs> yep, same background. Yep. It's that road with the with the sun, like we're riding toward the sunset, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Yeah, and then there's one more I wanna share with you. Ah, yes. Okay. So here are your books, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And you've got seven books right now, right? And that's completely cool. And I don't know if they're small paperback books, but they're also all available in audiobooks, right? Yep. So there they are. And yeah, are they pretty easy reads? Are they just little pamphlets? What kind of books are they? Most of them are 70 to 100 pages. Okay. I, I, I didn't make them like huge books because when you're starting out in addiction recovery or you're starting out in, you know, learning, learning about trauma or what have you, you don't want to have like the art of war sitting in front of you. <laughs> and, you, war, uh, you mean war and peace? <laughs> Or War and Peace, yeah. I just <laughs> yeah. happen to have the God of War over here. Oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> well, let's just see that sucker then. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, you, I, you, I was... you don't want to have something this thick. Oh, well, that's that's it, not. You know. I, don't, I don't. I think that's that's, do, that's doable. Um, I can yeah. probably find some books over here that are. <laughs> like the, the the handbook of uh, hypnotherapy uh, suggestions and metaphors is a pretty healthy read as well. I could oh, probably, probably grab that off. Yeah. Huge, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I but, digress. But, yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I I, I want to make them so they're they're an easy read for people. You know, nice. like um, I just redid the footprints book. And um, we did the cover and added a lot of stuff in it. And I <clears throat> I put a lot of um, illustrations and stuff in it. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's not just reading, but it's looking at, you know, like, I'm, I'm a big, like, picture person with the books, too. Mm -hmm. And that Footprints one, is that the one that is about grief and loss or yes yep okay yep. yeah yeah it's a super cool cover for sure yeah. so. that picture is actually my uh my family's summer home in a place called east douglas here in massachusetts mm -hmm. and those footprints are real footprints that I don't know who, but somebody left on the dock after getting off the boat one time, and my cousin took that picture. And I don't know if people can see in this Footprints book, it says in right in here in the dark part, it says you are not alone. Hmm. So that might have a, I don't know if that has a spiritual sort of a uh, scent to it, but yeah, I did not even see those footprints right there on the dark, the, the, yep. the dock. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because nice. the one the one thing that people want to realize when they're going through something is that they're not alone. Right. You know that mm -hmm. they're um, they're not suffering alone through whatever is 
going on with them. Yeah, it's just a really super cool website. Everybody go check that out for sure. And one of the things we really wanted to talk about too was how uh, that you and others can encourage our younger generation today because right now it's really super difficult for people who are younger to have hope. A lot of them have been through the pandemic, of COVID, uh, some of them are suicidal, some of them uh, just don't even know what they're living for or what kind of hope there is. And so I was wondering if you could offer any kind of hope to our, our young people who are overwhelmed, maybe checked out or fearful about the future. What do you have to say to our young people? Well, something I say in every single podcast that I've ever been on is um, don't give up hope because mm -hmm. back 20 years ago, 20 something years ago, I tried taking my life and if I succeeded in the one thing that I'm thankful I failed in, my son wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be a seven time author. I wouldn't be talking to you. You know, my story would never got out, would have never got out there. There's so many things that would have never happened. You know, and now I'm going to be a homeowner in the spring. I'm, you know, I'm working for one of the best companies in existence in ex in addiction recovery. You know, mm -hmm. my my life is blessed. You just never know how your life can change. And I know that with everything out there right now, pardon me for swearing, but shit sucks mm -hmm. right now, you know. But you got to be a firm believer that it will get better. You know, I, I think that somebody, not to go political, but I'm hoping that somebody will become a, the president next time and will do something good for this country. I'm actually hoping for the rock. Oh, the Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson. Yes. Yes. If, if you're listening to this rock, please, please run. We need you. <laughs> okay. I didn't know he was even a contender. I love The Rock. Um, there was, there oh was talk gosh. about it like last year, I think. Okay. All right. Oh, fair enough. Gosh. Yeah. You just really want somebody to make a difference uh, in the country and how uh, offer people hope for sure. Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, so we have that to look forward to. Possibly The Rock is president. Uh, let's I mean, let's just awesome. rock on with that talk. <laughs> I think I'm going to spread that rumor. And it's and it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just love the, the last movie he was in that I saw was, I believe it was the one where they, uh, he was, uh, was it Jumanji? I think it was Jumanji that he was oh, in. Okay. And uh, he was, he was great in that. You got to see Black Adam. Well, I, you know, there's a lot of things I got to see for sure, because I don't, I don't get back far enough from my computer to do that kind of stuff uh, because I got so much stuff going on, but uh, that is great. So hope. And just like, if you're a young person out there, don't stop believing like Journey said, Now you might yeah. be too young. Of course you are too young probably to know that song, but for those of us who have been born and raised in the seventies, like I have been, don't stop believing. Uh, something is going to happen and you don't know what. So might as well just continue on that path. The path that is behind a Charles Smith right now uh, toward the sunset, toward a brighter day, right? Uh, there you go. Wow. There's the path. You yep, could yep. be there. You could be yep. there, young people. And you are our future, right? Because the boomers, the boomers are going to be, you know, they're, you know, they've been, they've been hanging on, but they, they're going to have their day to, you know, fade away. And then, What's going to be next is you guys, right? You guys. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, I was young not too long ago. I'm only fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I'm going to get that quote that you said. I I am so glad I didn't. I failed at something that I wanted to succeed at, which was uh, committing suicide, right? And so yeah. that is the one thing you are really glad that you failed at. 
And uh, I really, I am glad too, because otherwise we wouldn't be having uh, this conversation today for sure. Well, so you've got a couple of other things here. I've got you, you've got a Facebook page here that I saw, and uh, I don't know if it's a group or if it's just a page where you post stuff. But That's you just might want to check where them out. I post on... stuff, and people can go on there and you know interact with me on there. Yeah. Awesome. And then you've also got a YouTube channel, and I was uh, actually looking at some of your videos on there, and it looks like um, we can go and visit there now and look at some of your videos. Um, you've got uh, this, I'm sure that's probably your son over there. On, on that your... is my son, yes. Yeah, and you're, it looks like you're at a book signing there. I that's was, so yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. and so please look at, at, at Charles's YouTube channel. We all know that it's really important to uh, be recognized on social media, and he's got some pretty good uh, videos there. And uh, I've list, I looked at the one with you and your son at the book signing, I believe, I'm not sure which one it is. I think if I click on videos, you might be able to see the one that I looked at. But yeah. Um, well, I, and I, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I sent that into America's Funniest and I never got a response, but I thought that it would win hands down. It was pretty <laughs> funny. I, I thought it was. In fact, I'll try and find it and put a link to it down below in the show notes and uh, and we can all look at it together because I thought it was pretty pretty darn funny as well. Uh, your kid's uh, pretty hilarious and so are you. So check Charles out on his YouTube channel. And then I, I don't know how active you are on Twitter, but this is your this is your Twitter. Yeah, I am trying to be more active on there. Mm-hmm. I've never really, I'm a writer. And as a writer, I like to write. So being limited to what I can write on a social media thing. I am not really that big of a fan of Twitter. Right. Sorry, Elon. Uh, but limited, limited, not even words, <laughs> but characters. Like yeah. we have to, and the spaces all count too, and the, and the periods and everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's the Twitter. And uh, yeah, so uh, check him out. And uh, Charles, it was just so great to have you here today. Any parting words or thoughts about chaos, about this world, about the Rock as president? And oh, that's right. I wanted to ask you a Can last question. What's that? Can we send this to the Rock? Well, I will definitely try. <laughs> Okay. I'm not beyond. I'm not beyond uh, doing that. Of course not. Uh, but uh, you sound like you are. From, obviously, I think you said you're from Massachusetts, but you kind of you kind of sound like no, more New Yorky. Are you from New York uh, originally? No, I, I'm no. I'm from everywhere originally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from everywhere, but nowhere. <laughs> you can't find me, and you can. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, you do. You sound like you've been uh, on the streets of New York for a little while. So I just wanted to, to know that. No, Again, here, no. <laughs> here's Charles' website, Lifelong Experience. Uh, dot net. And uh, again, I really appreciate you being here with me today uh, on Calming the Chaos. You're welcome, Tracy. It was a, my, my pleasure, for sure. <laughs> nice. Well, stick around for a little bit. We're going to do the outro and then we'll be done. Okay. Thanks for listening to Calming the Chaos podcast. You can find all Calming the Chaos podcasts on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Music, Spotify, Amazon, and on YouTube. You can also go to www.calmingthechaospodcast.com for more information and to see all podcast episodes. Thanks so much for listening, and I look forward to sharing my next podcast episode with you. In the meantime, take care.